We're right on the main drag here in High Falls. Building to our left, they call it a lock tender's cottage. It's not. It's the old Keter Cement building right there. Used to be down by the falls and got moved at some point in the 20th century. Now a popular uh, bed and breakfast. Well, Airbnb, I suppose. Yeah, bed and breakfast. But what we're going to go look at today is an exciting project we have at the Canal Society here. We were very fortunate in that we were able to uh, acquire for the museum an 1850 toll collector's office that then was added on to by 1862 for a telegraph office. And as you can see here, I'm not sure how far back I'll get today, but uh, <clears throat> first we got to clear the site. It belonged to a local family for the longest time who lived both in the building and eventually in this trailer right here. Uh, local Dick Stokes is uh, generously offered to help us clear the site, and he's already begun. He's going to help us get rid of this debris right here. Uh, unfortunately, this prairie schooner has uh, got no value because of the shape it's in. But I really want to just see if we can get... Let's see here. A little icicle. We've had some snow recently. I think it's snowing downstate today even. There's a van. Unfortunately, a couple trees have fallen on it. I swear every time I come here, there's another tree on it. We're going to get all this debris cleared out of the way. Because where we really want to find ourselves, what we're very excited about, is right over through here. But what a beautiful thing this is. <clears throat> so this was what you're looking at right here. This first part was built in 1850. And at that point in time, the DNH had just bought the canal house, our new home, and they had rerouted the canal. So it used to come over that way. And they, they did a new route. It's too serpentine for the bigger boats. And the, the old canal route joined right there. Well, the cement plants and stuff down the creek a little ways really still needed the transportation. And so the canal company obliged. They kept water on that section, but you had to pay a toll. And so this building was built to be a toll collector's office. So as you can see right here, this is the original 1850. And it looks it, doesn't it? It needs some work. We will be restoring it as we can get the funds. Of course, we have to have our plans <coughs> um, approved by the State Historic Preservation Office. So this is a toll collector's office because this was the one spot they could get those boats. The coal boats didn't have to pay a toll. Ignore the keep out signs. We're not going to go in there today. That'll be for a later part of this video or some video. <coughs> but this second section was then added as a to as a for the telegraph. And some people think that perhaps that this, this is the oldest telegraph office still extant in America. I'll have to figure out how to figure that out, if you know what I mean. But... Uh, a historian's work is never done. Got to love your job, people. Let's see if I can get you a better view of this. In nicer weather, I might try and show you the back. But here it is. This is the towing path. This, the telegraph office was just for the D&H. We're told that when they had a lot, of, of, uh, a lot of coal, when there was a glut, they would telegraph down the line and tell all the lock tenders not to let the coal boats through. It was tough being a canaler in the 19th century working for the man, or in this case, the corporation. But so this section here, and you can see in the basements, I'm not going to go there today. Again, that'll be later in this, uh, down, down the line when, uh, when we've got it a little clearer and cleaner. But I thought it was worth uh, starting by taking a look at it and showing you what we're starting with here. So we're, we plan to clear the towing path. Yeah, so this was a D&H telegraph office. You couldn't go in and send a telegraph. However, an oral history collected in the 1960s from a, a man who was a child in the 1890s and worked on the canal through, oh, I think probably through the 1918 final end of the canal. The canal operated east of here to the round out until 1918. Uh, this section held water until about 1901. Um, but it, we're told that the uh, locals would come on election night to, to hear the results. The telegraph, an amazing technology in that... Uh, Communication went from taking weeks, if not months, to being immediate. Huge, huge. Just that was a, you know, that's a, that's a point in our history, folks. The telegraph changes the world. 
it got immediately smaller, as they like to say. <clears throat> but this building is really, besides the graffiti, it's pretty well the way that it was built. Um, I don't know how much of this clapboard is going to be viable as we get into the, uh, um, as we kind of ascertain what the state is. I've been on the interior. It's full of a lot of stuff right now. Uh, it's got the, all the original plaster throughout, except for one room got a modern sort of, you know, modern 20th century masonite uh, ceiling. So that plaster must have failed. And even though it's open to the weather right now, we're going to get in soon and get the tarp over this. We meant to do it before the snow, but the snow got here before us. Um, but I see no signs. The Canal Society about a decade ago, with the permission of the then owner, um, made sure the roof was working. And from what I can see on the interior, was there a couple months ago, I don't see any signs of water damage despite the open windows. But we've got our work cut out for us. It's going to take us some doing. We've got a lot of great volunteers offering to help where they can. And uh, we'll get uh, grant funding and go to the general public and we will restore this historic gem and make it part of our, our National Historic Landmark Five Locks Walk will become a Six Locks Walk. Why, right here is Lock 15. Now, if you've been watching Where's Our Historian, um, you've seen a lot of locks. This one's not in such great shape. Hey, while we're here, despite the snow, it took me the longest time to figure out what those were. There was a railway that went over this, uh, carrying cement from a plant over there, but that's not what those are for. There was a bridge over there because there was two towing paths, one on each side, and that bridge was for the teams to get themselves over to the Roebling Aqueduct, which was dead ahead. You see that black fence? Let me see if I can zoom in here a little. Yeah, there we go. And while we're over here, and it's a nice winter so you can see through the trees, um, we have a lot of bird's eye view pictures. Maybe we'll insert one here. They were all taken from up on that ridge up there. The locks on the other side of here were referred to as the, well, I say the M-word locks. And I think that's because they were so far from the, the, the settled part of town that that hill made it so that there really wasn't much going on but for the canal. And I think that um, a lot of people didn't want to work over there. Well, you know, why? There's a burgeoning town here. There's taverns and places to get yourself a libation. There was a temperance house, a place to not get a libation. Uh, but uh, the other side, we're told, was known as the M-word locks. Uh, so far, so the surmise is that people of color were um, tending those locks. Um, so far, examinations of the historic record, I can't find a person of color who's named as a lock tender, but it's not like we have a list of all the lock tenders. We have a list of a lot of lock tenders, but nobody went out and made a, you know, a formal list, at least not that I've found so far. And so here we are by Dick Stokes' uh, excavator, I guess this is. Look at this. I bet you'll be using these jaws a lot coming up. <clears throat> well, we'll see. Hope to get some of that on video. But let's swing around here because there you go. The historic Depew Tavern, 1797 with a 1827 edition, the nearest section of the building, those closest uh, four windows there. And then a, we don't know exactly when that north edition was built, but it was in pictures dating from the 1860s. This particular version was only built in the last couple of years by the Canal Society, but based on historic pictures and is as accurate as it can be to what we knew was there in the historic period. And that's the home to our new uh, museum and Mid-Hudson Visitor Center. Uh, so just a just down the towing path a little way from the toll collector's office. <laughs>